said, I pray that you would receive healing. <coughs> These things we ask in your name. Amen. 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 We have no flag. Out front. Well, everybody knows the pledge, so say pledge. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The good news is this will be our last meeting here. Our first yeah, meeting, yeah. I, don't you give me that yeah. our first, our first meeting in February will yeah. be back at City Hall. Yeah. <laughs> if it doesn't happen, it's Felicia's fault. <laughs> we we'll now call this meeting to order. Mr. Garrett. Mr. Hawkins. Here. Mr. Grimes. Here. Mr. Cummins. Here. Ms. Mel. Here. Mr. Ledbetter. Here. Ms. Webb. Here. Ms. Isby. Here. Okay, you should have received copies of the January 9th, 2024 City Council meeting minutes. Any changes, corrections? Make a motion for approval as submitted. Second. Have a motion and a second to approve the minutes as submitted. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Pass okay, so seven to zero. Uh, Mr. Winningham uh, had something to do with his family night. I think he sent all of you a copy of the financials mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. We sat out and had a brief meeting. Everything looks about as did right. year end. Any questions? I'll do my best answer. Take a motion to approve. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes. I'm sorry, to approve the financials as submitted. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Pass it seven to zero. Let's see. First up, we have economic development, and we have a re resolution to set a public hearing for a proposed water system rate adjustment for Conway Corporation. And tonight, we have Mr. Carroll here and Mr. Bethay. Come on up, Brett. This would be to set a resolution to set a public hearing for February 13th at 6 p.m. at the Conway Expo Center. I'm sorry, that will be the City, City Hall. Hall. Yeah, okay. oh, let's change that. City Hall. Yeah, yeah. All right, go ahead, Mr. Carroll. Yeah, well, I, Brett Carroll, uh, CEO of Conway Corp. I've had the privilege of working there for 26 years now, and so just uh, would like to ask respectfully for the council to set public hearing. February 13th to consider a rate proposal that our board approved on January the 16th. Uh, just a couple of comments and then I'll sit down or answer any questions you might have, but uh, it was 2016 when we brought our last water rate proposal to to this body. Um, so there have been some, uh, some inflationary cost increases. During that time, increased capital expenditures uh, for uh, uh, replacing aging infrastructure. Um, and then also watershed protection efforts and uh, conservation needs. And so, and just the, you know, frankly, taking care of the needs of a growing city. So anyway, those are the primary drivers uh, that, are, that are making this request necessary. But uh, again, just asking to set the public hearing for February 13th at this point. Any, any questions for Mr. Carroll, Mr. Bethay? Make a motion for the adoption of the resolution to set the public meeting. And Mr. Garrett, I have that as R2409, is that correct? correct? Thank second. you. A motion and a second to uh, set a public uh, hearing on February 13th at 6 p.m. back at City Hall to propose a water system rate adjustment for Conway Corporation. Any questions, thoughts? <coughs> Mr. Garrett. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Pass it seven to zero. Next up, along the Thank same you. lines, ordinance approving the new water system rate adjustment for Conway Corporation. And uh, we will just read the title tonight. There will be no vote on this tonight. There still has to be a public hearing, but by law, we have to read the, uh, the title. This time, I will ask our city attorney if he would, he would do the first reading on this. This is an ordinance fixing the rates to be charged for the services of the municipal water work system, superseding ordinance number 0-16-46 and 0-17-58 repealing all ordinances in conflict and for other purposes, whereas the city of Conway, Arkansas owns a water storage treatment and distribution system serving residents within and near the city, which system is operated and maintained by Conway Corporation, a nonprofit corporation organized and existing under the laws of the state of Arkansas, pursuant to an exclusive franchise granted to the corporation by the city, pursuant to ordinance number 0-86-11, as amended by Ordinance 0-14-100, Ordinance 0-16-46, and 
and O-17-58, and whereas the Board of Directors of the Corporation has determined the need to provide sufficient revenues and has proposed a rate increase for system services. Thank you, Mr. Finkenbeiner. Hey, Council. That would be Ordinance 02402. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Garrett. Okay, Council, we have our public hearing set, and we have read the first one. All right, thank you. Thank you, Brett and Bill, for coming out tonight. Next up, we have a community development. And Mr. Hawkins, I'll turn this over to you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. First item on this portion of the agenda is consideration to approve waiving all the readings for ordinances on the January 23rd City Council agenda. I'll take a motion for uh, so moved. Second. second. We have a motion and a second to waive three readings for all uh, ordinances for January 23rd, 2024. Any further discussion? Mr. Garrett. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Passes. Seven to zero. Mr. Hawkins. Next item, Mr. Mayor, is an ordinance to rezone the property <coughs> 1811 and 1813 Hark Rider Street and 15, I'm sorry, 1152 Hunter Street. It presently is zoned R2A and O2. The requested zoning is a PUD. We have an ordinance to be read for this item. It's ordinance 024 03. <laughs> And before we start tonight, uh, Ms. Tucker is going to uh, address the council and those attending uh, to bring everyone up to speed on this. Historically, we do not have to open the floor to uh, folks speaking for or against, but we're going to go ahead and do that again tonight so that everyone can be heard. But we'll start with Ms. Tucker. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, I'm, I want to go through a quick timeline of events with this um, proposal. Mr. Lasker decided or he met with planning staff to talk about a development at these three addresses. Now there's three addresses, but there's four lots. Okay. And when it's replatted, it'll, it will show four lots. Um, he was advised at that time because of the access to the two middle lots to probably rezone this as a PUD and do the complete development. He had a pre-application meeting with uh, planning. There were, representatives of transportation, I believe sanitation, several other people in the room. But typically, those people don't talk about the, the nuts and bolts of everything until it gets inside development review. So the, the pre-application meeting did take place, but all the details were not hammered out at that particular time. Staff made an oversight. They didn't, re they didn't require a stamp. Um, or it, the code requires a stamp, but we failed to do that, and we acknowledge that. We now have the stamps. I've given you all copies of them. Um, Mr. Lasker had a public meeting with the neighbors, which is required by code. He went back, took all of their stuff into consideration, everything that they said, had a second meeting with them, came back with a different proposal, taking out all retail, and, and keeping it strictly at, at a residential. Took all of that into consideration. It went to planning commission. They approved with nine conditions, which you have copies of. And planning commission didn't add any additional conditions other than what the planning staff had suggested. And it passed unanimously. And then it comes to you guys and you can pick it up from there you know what happened next. So if you have any questions or if there's anything I can clarify, I'll be happy to do that. Mr. Lasker is in Italy tonight, um, but he's watching. So he's very vested in this, in this project. Um, what he has in mind, I, we have visited with him extensively. What he has in mind is very cohesive to the neighborhood. This also has to go through uh, site development review it also has to be approved by the historic district. All of the building materials, the down to the paint, has to be approved by the historic district to make it integrate into the neighborhood well. He, by right, on the three R2 lots with a variance, he can go in and put a two-story duplex in there right now with the setback variance, which we grant a lot of the time. Um, 
I'm sorry, I lost my whole train of thought there. Um, but anyway, he can he can do that by right right now on the three that are that are zoned R two A. He has made a concession, and and for that he can use he can have a thirty five foot building, and he's made a concession to bring it down to thirty. If he goes any lower than that, I'm not sure that it would get through HDC at that point because the roof pitch would be so low that I, I don't think it would, would look good. So if you have any questions for me, we'll be glad to answer. Why are we just now finding out that you can you have four lots as opposed to three? Well, I, I believe it was Charlie DeBoer that owned the house that, that was there before, and he built that house, or whoever built that house built it on two lots, and so it was platted as three, but it's really four lots. It's, it, it's got the room to have four lots. <clears throat> and with the addition of the O2, if that was down zone to R2A or R2, and so we'd have four lots. Right, if we down zone that to R2A. And with, you know, the setback variance, he could put four duplexes there. Yes, ma'am. Okay. The density, the density can go there almost already. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, bringing it down to just three is not, it, it's cost prohibitive for, for Mr. Lasker. Yes, ma'am. Okay, um, thank you. It, okay, I just have to be very frank. Um, the house that I grew up in was on two lots. So yes, when that neighborhood was pl platted, and it, what that brings to my mind are just visions of my house getting someday chopped up into well that house has been removed already that I house know, is not there anymore you know I, I guess that's not i'm not wording it correctly but um it, it i i understand the citizens that live near this development i understand their concerns with that with the whole thing because it's it's a huge change, and it's when you're where you're talking about replanting and, and uh, all of that. I don't know. I, I, I'm just talking. It's I'm been sorry. it's been a lot of years since that's since a plat's been filed, so it's got to be replanted anyway. Okay. I mean that that has to happen regardless. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. You're that welcome. Answers actually my question. Okay. So. Thank you. <laughs> So you're telling me they can build four uh, duplexes without anything? As it stands right now, three of the lots are, are zoned R2A. So on three of the lots, yes, he can. It would re require a setback variance, but yes, he could put that on there right now. The, where Collins Roofing is right now, that is, is zoned O2. <coughs> That would have to be down zoned. That house would have to be removed. But I mean, ostensibly, yes, he could put one there too. Any more questions, Ms. Tucker? Thank you, thank you Ms. Tucker. Okay, thank you. I think next we have uh, Megan Wetworth, the applicant spokesperson. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just said if you And would you put, did really good with my last name, honestly. Like, good if, job. If you would uh, state your name and address just for the record. Uh, it's Megan Weckworth, 240 Skyline Drive, uh, Conway, and that's the Tyler Group. Uh, I'm going to be speaking on behalf of the developers. A couple things I do want to point out. One of the reasons we're not just going simply for a rezone of the R2A on just the O2 lot in order to have four duplexes is because of the cross access. We have no access off a of hard rider for those two middle lots. So the PUD actually will allow us to do a single private drive for all four of those duplexes and that'll help with traffic in that area. Uh, otherwise, we would meet the square footage requirements with all four of those lots for four duplexes. The only issue we've got is mainly the road frontage and that's where we'd have to ask for that waiver or variance on it. Um, also, we agree with all the conditions that planning staff put forward for us. We're amenable to that. Any questions for me? Is it Hark Rider a state highway? 
I believe so, yes, ma'am. Okay. So, you're. Basically, our two middle lots would be landlocked if we. Okay. If That's I help. The, okay. <coughs> thank, thank you. you. That does occur to me. Well, and we spoke last week, and thank you for your time. I you're sure welcome. I was that. happy to put a name to the face, actually. No, that's okay. And you brought up a couple things, and I just want to bring those out that, that you all were thinking of doing anyways, and I shared that with the neighbors. Great. Um, about, yes, you're going to put a fence up. Yes, ma'am. Um, that the trash cans will be picked up with the drive through mm -hmm. behind each unit, um, and that drive will be built so that sanitation trucks and fire trucks and all that, the weight of them, I think you, you mentioned hey, that. Heavy duty asphalt. Right. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. That's um, or concrete. And I think the only other thing, and, and I don't know, and I won't speak on behalf of all the neighbors because many of them are here, you had mentioned about gating it, and I don't know if that's something you want to do or that the neighbors, I mean. It's something. I, I don't know if that's a big deal. You had mentioned that it was. It, it was something we had rolled around with just to kind of keep traffic regulated in the area. Mm -hmm. uh, the gates would be open during the day so people can come and go, but at night it would be gated and locked down. That way only residences could come in or people who have their codes. So it's not people just pulling in and using it as a cut through at night. I see. And I think those were the main things that I wrote down in my notes when we talked before okay. I met with, with some of the neighbors. So I just Great. wanted to make sure I had those correct. Okay. Anybody else? Thank you, Ms. Wexler. You're very welcome. Anyone else like to speak or speak in favor? Okay, at this time, we'll open. Oh, come on up, Mr. DeRossi. You'll, again, I know you, but you'll need to state your name and address for the record. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, David DeRosa, uh, 1005 Borough Avenue. Um, yeah, so, and I also own a, a property at 1260 Hunter Street, so I'm, I'm right in the mix of all this. And... Um, I, I understand the neighbors' concerns uh, about, you know, the historic district and the, the you know, the flavor of the neighborhood. Um, but I also understand the need for development and, and a good development, a nice development. And I think that's what Mr. Alaska has in mind. So, um, and, and, I, and I'm also a, a businessman. I understand finance. And I understand that he needs that density to make to make it work uh, financially. The, um, I know some of the concerns are the, the look and the feel, and, and um, I'm, I'm confident that the site review and the historic district review will uh, enforce uh, their code, their, their, their rules to make it look nice. Um, I know one of the other concerns is, is traffic. And um, I own a 14-unit apartment building, and, and I've been there in the mornings. I've been there in the evenings when, when people are coming home from work and, and leaving for work. And, you know, it's, it's really not a big event. Uh, so the 14 units, actually, have, I have more residents than what would live at this, these four duplexes. So it's not like a, there's going to be an onslaught of traffic um, rolling through there. And, and I, I believe the, the planning department, they have engineers that are, I guess, from the city uh, transportation department that have estimated, I think the number I heard was 54 trips per day. And, and they have data that backs this up. And I would, you know, I could argue, call it 100, but spread that over 10 hours a day and it's gonna be nominal cars coming through there, especially if you have multiple access points. So think, think about that. 100 cars, 10 hours a day with multiple access points. That really comes down to just you know, two or three cars an hour maybe per access point. So again, I think, um, I think the neighbors need to be kind of open to this in terms of the, what it will do for the value of the, the, the neighborhood, the property. And again, that strip of Hark Rider there, I think if, if the city had its way and, and you know, was really thinking about the, the right use for that, that is some prime commercial uh, property. You know, on that state highway, that strip of land you know, is, 
is prime. People should be driving down there and seeing businesses along there, you know, to drive commerce. But, uh, and, and that was part of the original plan was quiet office. That's been eliminated. So now it's just gonna be residential. Um, I know there's been concern about the elevation, you know, like uh, as you drive along Park Rider, you see some of the, you know, where um, Allstate Insurance is located. It's a little home. Then there's the little tax office, and then there's Collins Roofing. Well, you know, those are holdovers from way back. But once you get past that area, then you got, Hart, you got um, Hendricks College. The elevation changes dramatically. And, um, and I, I, think, I, I think what uh, <coughs> uh, Lasker is proposing is going to fit nicely in that neighborhood. I think I've said enough. Anybody have any questions or comments about what I've said? You know, part of my effort is just to show that not everybody in the neighborhood is against the development. So I appreciate your time. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me, y'all. If y'all would. Yeah. Let the conversation stay up here. Thank you. No, no, uh, we, we can't have back and forth. <coughs> yes, sir. If you would state your name and address for the record. Yes, sir. My name is Logan Wilmington. Uh, I live at 1915 Cleveland, but also in the duplex at 1909 and 1907 Cleveland. It's just right down the street, right next to the Gist Street Apartments. Um, so I guess I wanted to talk about a few different things. One of them being, I'm a student at Hendricks College, and I see a lot of students walk by my house every single day down to uh, down towards Think Coffee in that area. Probably you know, five, ten students. Um, and one of the things that I that I really that I see in the area and I don't like is, you know, the neighborhood's going downhill, right? We see a lot of these homes in, in the neighborhood have, have become rent houses, and you know whether whether that's good or bad, these are these are run down rent houses. And I think we've seen what what happened in the apartment complex nearby recently. You know, they were they were moving move quite a bit of drugs out there and that scares me being a resident in this beautiful neighborhood. I, I love living in the historic district. I get to walk to class at Hendricks every day and I get to see the beautiful houses. Uh, one of them that really stands out there's this beautiful house that has that has all the plants in the front. I forget whose house is all the plants? I love your house. I love your house. <laughs> <laughs> she has all the plants and this uh, wonderful golden doodle. I enjoy watching uh, watching the neighbors walk up and down the street and talk and have conversations with them but the neighborhood's going downhill and I don't I don't see a good way to Really, I hate to necessarily say push renters out of out of neighborhood, but to push low income rentals out of the neighborhood so it doesn't consume our so it doesn't consume our neighborhood. Um, and one of the things that I feel like this property, um, one of the things that I feel like this development really helps with is you know number one it raises the value of home prices, but number two, your th these properties are going to start around half a million to six hundred thousand dollars. When you move people with with that kind of money into the neighborhood, they're not going for any of this, for lack of better terms. Uh, I guess crime is the word for the for uh, for a lot of the what's the right word? They're not going for a lot of the the bad the bad issues that we're having with the renters. Um, the neighborhood. We're going to have somebody else to join the fight in keeping the neighborhood nice and beautiful and, and preserving the historic district. Um, and I guess my I, I leave with with a question for you guys is you know what does this property become if this doesn't go through? What does this property become? Uh, David spoke about this place being a. Uh, a great a great opportunity for, for some commercial real estate to go in and I see that as being a real estate agent I see you know this would be a perfect spot for some commercial real estate to come in and then what happens when somebody who, who's got the funding to come in and fight this battle and put a piece of commercial real estate there put something there that we don't like who can come back every single year who can file a lawsuit against the city what happens when those guys come in with that kind of money because we're seeing it I'm seeing people from Arizona from California from all these all these different places who have a million dollars cash to drop on a home move into the area and that's what that's what scares me the most is if this doesn't go here, what, what goes? You guys have any questions? Thank you. Awesome. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak in favor? At this time, we'll change gears and those who'd like to oppose, first person that wants to be a spokesman, we'll give you 10 minutes and anyone after that three minutes. My name's Mike Forrest. I live at 1208 Hunter Street. Um, been there for about 15 years, and we chose that neighborhood because of its, its, you know, if you've been down Hunter Street and you've been down Hunter Street in October, you understand it's a beautiful place to be. <coughs> Tons of people come in and take pictures, maple trees. Miss um, Wanda's got most of those maple trees. 
But, uh, you know, as my wife and I were talking about this, and it's, it's concerning to us because I, I, I'm a process guy. And if I don't follow process at my job, people get hurt. Um, the process wasn't followed in this case. Now, uh, with the new management coming in and the planning department, there's some remediations that have been made on this. But, uh, you know, I, I, could, I could read you the PUD uh, zoning codes here and either entertain you or put you to sleep. Uh, but I, I don't think y'all want to know that. I, I would encourage you to go read those. Um, I would encourage the planning department to review those uh, because, and the planning commission, for the record, because they weren't followed. Uh, for whatever reason, I'm not going to put, put a reason on it. But, excuse me. For this development, uh, that they weren't followed. So the, the pre-application um, conference happened, um, but was there a, a committee meeting afterwards? Um, did, I think one of the biggest things about this is before it even comes to the planning commission, it's supposed to be a fully vetted plan that you can clearly see. I was able to go out on the internet and search for other PUDs and find fully developed plans either from an engineer or an architect that explain line by line according to the PUD code, these are the things that we are going to do. I cannot find that for this development. Um, I would ask the gentleman in the hat, um, but just for the record, he's the his his real estate sign standing on that property right now. So, um, you know, I, I would I would ask you all to reconsider um, sending this sending this back through a proper process. I know that's that's it hasn't followed the proper process, and I know that may not uh, be what the proper process is here. But I would ask you to vote against it and send it send it back through the proper process. <coughs> Any questions? Thanks, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity. My name is John Courtway. I live at 1222 Hunter. I'm not going to replow the ground that I plowed two weeks ago, so I'll spare you that. But I do want to continue to voice my opposition to this development as currently proposed. My primary objection, and I think <clears throat> that of my neighbors as well, is that the density of this development is simply too great for a small, modest, historic neighborhood. And I ask that you limit the proposal of three duplexes or townhouses. I, I, I've been characterized as different things, but I'd ask you to limit it to three, and you can get there in two different ways. First, the Collins roofing lot that's currently zoned O2 can be rezoned to an R2A and then an easement be granted across the R2A lot blocking access from Hunter. These two simple steps will allow the developers to develop the lots consistent with other city codes, codes that my neighbors and I have to abide by. It will allow the developers, though, to only place three duplexes or townhouses on the lot because the street frontage will only support three and not four. Now, my hearing is bad, and I, I thought I heard Ms. Tucker say that it would currently, if you rezoned all four lots, R2A, would support four. I asked that very same question in an email to the planning department back in December 1st, and they wrote me back this, which makes sense. Each duplex, there has to be 100 square feet of street frontage. They tell me the lots, the four lots, have a total of 300 feet. So there's no way, according to this email response, that I got nobody signed it, it's just from the planning department. These lots, if you rezone all four of them, they could only support three duplexes, not four because of a street frontage problem. The second way you can do it is it, if the council chooses to grant the rezoning to a PUD, you have the power as a condition to granting the request to limit the development to three duplexes or three townhouses. I agree that there's a benefit to us as, neighbor, as a neighborhood with a PUD, but I should note that granting the developer's request at this time would not be the best word I can come up with is prudent 
as the application and the accompanying plan and these conditions that have now been started to kick around have not been fully vetted. And I think Mr. Frye sent an email to the council that uh, he copied me on that sums up my feelings and I think most of our neighborhood's feelings about this. Either of these options will reduce the density of this development. And let me close by saying this. I'm not saying that my neighbors and I are opposed to something going on to this parcel. These lots, we want something to go there. We want people to come in and be a part of our neighborhood and to be a part of the community that we've been trying to develop. We just ask that you would reduce the density of the development. Thank you Thank very much. Board. Anyone else like to speak against? Um, my name is Linda Skirm. I actually reside at 1935 Royal Drive in Conway, but my family has owned property at 1156 Hunter since 1953. So we've been there for a while, and I can remember playing in those trees that you were talking about on the lot next door uh, to my property. The property that uh, the, night, the 1156 properties are just to the west of the, al of, like, the alignment of the, uh, the frontage there. Uh, and I've, I've, uh, I've built many a tree houses in those big trees on that lot. Um, and it was just done for yesterday, of course. But, um, <laughs> and I guess it's more of a, of a question that I have to the um, uh, survey folks. There is a, uh, an alleyway that's between my property and this existing property that is, is still open. The, the alleyway has never been closed. And my question is, how does this property align with that alleyway? Um, it, it, we're on, on what we were presented tonight. Mm -hmm. Does and it shows the the, the uh, two parking lots or parking spaces. And I, I don't know if that sits to for my property line. There's a 20 foot space there that's an alleyway. So did, does this line then start? 20 foot east of my property line? I'm not sure if this one. Yeah, uh, yeah. <coughs> I mean, I'm, I'm actually looking at it out here. <coughs> and it's got the old plan on it, but this is your 20 foot alleyway. Yes. And then this is where that actual lot line starts. Okay. okay. And then this is yours over here. All right. That, yeah. Great. That, I've okay. never seen this. So that's, that's okay. One. That one, this that's one's mine. One. Nobody else has seen this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll keep this one. No. <laughs> <laughs> The, and the other thing is, when you talk about building a buffer, because uh, I'm, I'm like John, something is going to be put on this property, mm -hmm. and I'm just trying to figure out how this is going to fit up against my little bitty cottage that sits right here. Okay. Um, and when we talk about a buffer between the two, and you indicate a vegetation and a fence, is that would that be on the other side of or your side of that 20 foot alleyway correct we'd have to build anything that we put on the property on our property okay not inside the public not right inside the public and then if uh i know that i'm talking about the the, the trash trucks the secure uh, the safety equipment things like that that needs to move by it would still have to go along here not in this alleyway correct that is correct yes, okay that was my understanding. Again, thank you for a moment. And I, I've not been able to get those answers to those questions. And I thought that I probably should come up here and ask. I didn't know if you guys knew that there was an alleyway there or not. But um, thank you for your time. Any questions of me? No? No. no. Thank, thank, you. thank you. I'm glad you got the answers that you needed. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else like to speak uh, against? Okay, at this time, we'll bring it back to the council. And would you, your department like to uh, discuss the procedures? Uh, I know that the gentleman said those procedures were not followed. <coughs> would you like to? The glaring problem was the, the lack of the stamp. The, uh, uh, it did require an engineer or an architect stamp. And in the preliminary, we failed to do that. It's been rectified. So, and what you have before you is what will be submitted for site development review, and that's when uh, Conway Court, the transportation, sanitation, everybody will put their two cents in, sign off on it, or send it back 
to be fixed, whatever seems to be wrong. Um, all of that happens in site development review, and then at that point, once once it gets through that stage, it will go in front of the historic district, and they'll make sure that it adheres to all their uh, requirements. Thank you. And then they'll be free to, to start pulling permits to build. Okay. So we can't give, a, I think one of the things was, was a construction timeline. And until this process is through, we can't, we can't really hold their feet to the fire about that. So, so I just have a couple questions. One yes, uh, for you. Um, just please clarify because, you know, Mr. Courtway is saying, no, you can't put four duplexes there. And so what's the, what, that, what, that, is, what is the fact? Well, and, and it's true that it does require 100 feet and it's, it's, 300 and something. I don't, I'm sorry, I don't have the exact number right now. So that would be the variance that would be required. Okay. And then I guess the other question is probably directed to Mr. Finkenbinder. Legally, does a misstep like that require us to start over? So here's what the zoning code says pre application plans do not require a design professional stamp. However, applicants, and I'm just going to read this, sure. um, applicants are encouraged to work with design professionals as early as possible in the PUD planning. Planned unit development proposal officially submitted for planning commission review shall be reviewed and stamped by an architect, landscape architect, or engineer licensed by the state of Arkansas. My question would be, in response to yours, because good lawyers always answer questions with questions. Thank you. Uh, is, did the plan that is before the council, is it different than the one that was originally submitted to the planning commission stamp or no stamp? No, it is not. Okay. So it's exactly the same? Okay. Same density, same dimensions. If we have failed to follow the procedures exactly, step by step, and be consistent, regardless which way a decision is made, we still have vulnerability. Well, if I don't know that there's a city on the planet that it always does everything according to every single rule that it has. Mm -hmm. Well, what I, as the city attorney, would have to do is to, in order to answer your question, is first to look at the applicable rules and statutes, the zoning code, um, 1456. Title, Title 14, Chapter 56, to see is there something that the legislature or the city council set out as a remedy. What I mean by that is the council could, if it wanted to, establish a remedy in the zoning code to say if any steps are not followed, then this happens. And so that's my first step. That's not in there. And it's not in Title 14, Chapter 56. So that's just kind of a first step. Any lawyer would do that. Um, uh, then the in the absence of that, which is where we are, then I would have to assess in order to give my advice, which is all I have the authority to do, um, is to say, to take my knowledge of court decisions that may have applied this type of ordinance or a similar type of ordinance or law and try to glean from court decisions by judges, the smart lawyers, um, how they would view this in order to properly advise my client um, and to, to advise the city. Um, this now that goes back to my question to go all the way back to what Miss Mel had asked is that would be my first question in answering that question is is the plan different now than was submitted to the Planning Commission because judges t typically look at see what kind of error or omission might this be is it a major one that really changes things or is it a minor sort of technical one my understanding is that a stamp it, the, the stamp is now done yes sir and i distributed it before this meeting. so that's about uh, and i hope that answers your question mr cummins i'm, I'm not sure yep. how that did um in a long-winded sort of way it's what makes lawyers so popular by the way. <laughs> I, I have a your question has brought one to me woody i think the question is the original plan that that was brought to that did not have a stamp nothing has changed from that now in in miss tucker's defense she is brand new to the job 
Uh, she's trying to get everything worked out. So I'm seeing some heads shake back there. Y'all are saying the plan did change from from the time it wasn't stamped until it was. I'm sorry, ma'am. Would, would you would you step? Excuse me, ma'am. Yes. Would, would you come up to the podium? We we have we have people outside on TV watching this. <laughs> I, I, does that make sense? Does that make sense? It doesn't say that, but this should have been presented at the very beginning for all of us to understand what was being proposed, and it was not. I totally understand where you're coming from. I. The reason it wasn't presented like that was because we presented an original plan for the public hearing meeting, which got smeared. <laughs> so we came back with a different plan, and yeah, then that's when we're like, how about this one? And that's what moved forward. And so it was a moving target while it was going on. Ms. Weckworth, yes. would, would you address the council, please, about, so about sorry. this question? I'm sorry. And so <laughs> when we're back in City Hall, all these problems are going to go away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to speak right into it. She, she asked why this one wasn't originally like this and why was it not correct in the first place. Uh, when it was originally set up, it was commercial property with residential. And so that one was the kind of public <clears throat> meeting information to see how it hit. It did not hit well. So we came back, we revised it, and we're like, we changed it up in a couple weeks and presented it again. And that's what got presented to the Planning Commission. Okay. So it was a moving target. That's why this one kind of went along the bumpy road that it did. Does that make sense? I'm not sure that I, I answered it for me. Okay. It's just wondering why not all the information that they have right now wasn't on the original plan. The original plan was, yes. A commercial one. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it was the moving target that we were going with. I mean, perhaps, um, and I don't know, you know what you're doing, and, and a lot of this looks very professional, looks great, but, uh, however, um, if things are gonna be changed, that the neighbors and the residents haven't seen Maybe we should go back and have another public information. What you're seeing is what site development will see. The things that will change is going to be grading. It has to be shown on okay. there. Utility work, any light poles being placed. No, okay, I'm sorry. I must have misword, misworded that. Sorry. Um, because you said when you first started and everyone got together and had their public information meeting and it did not go well correct and this became a moving part well somehow in the moving part process it sounds like a lot of the residents did not get to see this new plan am i misunderstanding that that plan without the stamp was presented to planning commission not the planning commission to the, to the residents I, correct yes, yes. So the residents all did get Yeah, they saw this just without the stamp. At the second oh, public hearing. At the right. second. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. Yes. Second public that's public all I was at. Yeah. yeah. That's what I wanted to I would like to know that, that they did that of their own free will because only one public hearing is required. By, by code, only one public hearing is required. Okay. So they've gone above and beyond. And typically, things do change in South We. We nitpick it to death. Transportation is going to change a couple of things, but it's going to be the overall aesthetic of the development will remain the same. It's just getting all the different departments with the city on board that everything, every T is crossed and every I is dotted. That, those are the kind of changes that, that Megan was alluding to. Yeah. Thank you, Dave. And well, I believe this ahead, was what 
came before us at our last council meeting. Yes, ma'am. It just did not have the stamp we on it with all of changes. the conditions. That's correct. Since the last That's council meeting. Right. Right. All right, uh, I'm going to allow one more speaker. Uh, then we're going to bring us back to council for a vote. <coughs> to the city attorney is what? What does the PUD zoning code say about when a developed plan and what is to be in that plan when is that supposed to be delivered is it before the city council meeting or is it before the planning commission meeting if i read it correctly a, a fully developed plan following those pud uh, a b c a through h i think is supposed to be delivered to the planning commission that is not what was delivered so that that's my only question is Thank what's you. supposed to be delivered? Council, bring, bring it back. Well, there's several things. The, this, this is new to most of y'all. It's not new to most of us. And so some of these terms are thrown around. I understand how they can be confusing. Fully developed versus tweaking things later. There, certain things are fully developed at the beginning. Certain things are tweaked later. With the PUD, it's even more open. Uh, minor modifications are made after the fact. Uh, if this was passed or anything, it's not going to necessarily look exactly, <coughs> exactly like this because things do have to be incorporated that aren't thought of at the time. So it's not that it has to be 100% done before it even starts. That's never going to happen. Now, the process is what's in question. I think if, if we were to kick this back to the very beginning because we have a stamp and start the process over, I don't think you're going to have any change in anything that comes before us a month from now. I think it would come back looking exactly like it does now. All right. Um, that said, it does bother me that our process wasn't uh, followed, even if it was just technicality, even if it was just minor. Um, I think we need to follow our rules. So that 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 does concern me. Although again, a month from now. Start the process over, we're back talking about the exact same thing. So, one option could be where the process broke down was not having a stamped plan that went before the Planning Commission. So, if we were to refer this back to the Planning Commission at their, for their next meeting with the ability for the neighbors to add conditions, because we the neighbors have been working on that things that need to be in there before it comes back to us. And I'll go back and keep talking about the fence. And yes, he says he's going to build a fence, but it's not in as one of the conditions. And so what are those conditions? That would give them a chance at the Planning Commission to do that. Well, the council has to. Has right, right, right. But I mean to go back and catch where we, we, we the city, made a mistake in the process is at the Planning Commission, right? Well, the only thing I would say to that, Shelley, is, as you've seen, I mean, the neighbors can come up with a list of 85,000 conditions. Mm -hmm. The developer doesn't have to adhere, I mean, doesn't have any. Now, we could put them in there, but then, right. he, I mean, it's, it's not just what they want goes in. Right, you, right. And you know that. Yeah, I'm yeah, just saying, yeah. so, so that, I mean, I, mean, and, I, don't, and, know, I don't know what else, what other conditions they want other than three or none. Well, I was going to say, that's what I was hearing is the density, but obviously this density could go on the property as it is now with the variance, which we grant those more often than not. Mm -hmm. So I guess at this point, it's just a matter of, yeah, making that decision. I mean, you can say you don't want the high density, but if the property allows it, it's almost a mute issue. And Mr. Frog, is, is it Mr. Frog? Is that correct? Yep. Your last name? Forrest. Yes, sir. Forrest. Forrest. Forrest, Mr. Forrest. I'm so sorry. I apologize for that. Uh, you, you talk about the process. Mm -hmm. Here's my process. My process is, and I have a 30 year history of this process that any time there's a chance to put conditions on a piece of property or to not put conditions on a piece of property, regardless of where it is, where it, when it comes up, I'm gonna choose 
putting those conditions on, which means I'm going to fall on the side of the PUD on, on, on this. Uh, I just, whether it's three or four, that's a, that's a fairly minute issue in my mind because here's what I see driving from Walmart coming toward Hendricks on Hartbrider Street. I see a blank lot or several blank lots right now followed by the Dawkins Center, then followed by Hendricks. I see this as a way to extend what is a gorgeous campus right now into a more gorgeous campus by coming down and putting in a top flight development. And that's what this is. It's a development. It's no more, it's no less, Mr. Corway. And 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 so from that standpoint, I'm I'm ready to to make a motion on this and, and move forward. That's just me. Do you have a ordinance before you, Council? I'll make a uh, mo motion to adopt uh, the PUD as submitted. With the There's restrictions nine. that are that are listed therein, and adding one addition, and that is a fence to be located down the property line separating the yes. old addition and the new addition. I couldn't, what was that, Miss Mail? I couldn't hear. It'd be on the west side. Of the okay, be on the west side of the property. Yeah. <coughs> I would think that would need to be written down somewhere or if we're going to add one condition. It will. If we, okay, that's, that, yeah. that's what we're doing This tonight. is appropriate. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is correct. If you would like to throw something in there, now would be I the time. I can throw it in? Yeah. Now would be the time. But it would just be me writing it down. I mean, I, I, I'm just, I'm coming it's from a place of it's having lived in a PUD for, since it's inception and being promised a fence between us and Shady Valley and since 2008 and it's 2024 no fence so I don't know I, th I think these y'all did a great job with your conditions the Planning Commission did all of this is is great I just wonder who one goes to to make sure that these are followed does that make sense the planning mm -hmm. department yes so, and the, and the only thing that I want to add is Mr. Lansbury is fully intended to put a fence in vegetative buffers. Okay. That's never been a question. He, and I encourage you to make that, that condition. That's, that's something that he does not have any problem with. Well, that needs to be listed as number 10. On the yeah, right. Yes. Yeah, that'll be number 10 on the condition. A fence plus vegetation buffer. Yes. And so, do we fully, did you fully? Did, fully state what needed to be put for number 10 to fence along did you say fence along the western boundary western of this property boundaries. um i'm going to say it at least an eight foot high fence eight foot high privacy fence yeah. we've had a motion council has been agreed to but no. we've had a motion there's not been a second i'll second that motion with the Tenth condition. Okay. I have a motion and a second to adopt the ordinance to rezone property located at 1811 and 1813 Hawkrider Street and 1152 Hunter from R2A and O2 to PUD with the listed conditions. Any further discussion? Any other conditions, Ms. Webb, you had in mind? or? Well, I mean, every piece of property is different. So the my property that I've lived on is, is going to have different conditions. That yeah, they're all different. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, yeah, they're all different. That's so, the, yeah. I'll kind of look at the neighbors because we talked about some others. Were there any others that we talked about that you want me to bring up here in particular? Hmm? You can say The what? Street signs. Street signs? No parking. I don't think parking. Yeah, parking. I'm sorry. 
We need to bring this back sorry, to council. Sorry. That's okay. Unless, no, unless I, I asked them the question. No, well, you, I know you didn't. That's okay. No, you have the right to ask questions. Sorry, sorry. And we just need them to come okay. up to the microphone. Okay. So. Okay. So, no, having no parking on Hunter, where they would turn in, close to where they turn in, and that's not really a P. That wouldn't really go with the PUD. Mm -hmm. That would be no. That's not on the property. Yeah, that's but, not on the property. No. Um, but that's something we talked did. about handling trash pickup should we say trash pickup will be by each individual unit at the rear of the unit would, would you come to the microphone please i'm sorry just just a minute i've, I've kind of lost procedure here this council that's fine yeah. that's fine, fine. Okay. yeah right. i'm fine with entertaining that one item was listed that they needed to be um, owner occupied properties, but if they determined to be a leased property, does not need to be a short term lease like Airbnb, VRBO. It needs to be a long term lease so there's not a lot of people moving in and out of those properties. Can we determine that in these restrictions? Or is that a part of a POA? Council? That's not a question. Sorry, Sorry, I was Okay. Yeah. Well, that was a, that was a yeah. discussion. I'm going to ask Ryan for yeah, the land. That's a question. Right. So, mm -hmm. go ahead, Ryan. I don't believe that's allowed by law. We can't dictate who mm -hmm. lives in their property or who rents their property. That's, mm -hmm. that's up to the to the owner. Yeah. Thank you. And Stay for a period of time, for a short period of time or a long period of time. What? We don't have any ordinances. I've talked to the mayor and Ms. Tucker about developing a short-term rental ordinance that will govern the whole city. So <laughs> it will be more than just this one property. Um, but I would like to include that, that because we need to get moving here, um, that trash pickup is for each unit behind the unit. So there's not going to be like a big old, tr you know, we're trash we're, can. Oh, yeah, we're, back, we're, <laughs> we're back to the to the council. That's one of the conditions. Yes. Okay. So that would be on the west side of the building. Here. Yes, behind Thank the you. building. Okay, council, you have an ordinance before you. You have a motion and a second to adopt this ordinance. What, what is the motion? Stage again. So it would be the, the PUD is presented with two additional uh, well, Right now, Mr. Hawkins has a motion that's been seconded, I believe. Yes, it and is. Ms. Yes. Mel has made a motion to amend, so there would be, need to be a second, so you do it and kind okay. of reverse it. There would have to be a vote on Ms. Mel's proposed amendment to Mr. Hawkins' proposed amendment, if okay. that makes sense. Which no, no, it doesn't. So, <laughs> what are your what are your proposed amendments, Shelley? Mine is just the trash pickup the trash pick by up. each unit okay. and behind, you know on the west side. Okay. We okay, did so I'll take a motion to amend Mr. Hawkins's uh, motion to approve the ordinance to include the two conditions that Miss Mail added. Is that correct? Were there two or one? Second. I'll need a second. A motion and a second. I'll second it, but there was just the one that what Shelley one made, which was the trash pickup. I've, I've, listen, I've written down so many things. That's up here. okay. So they would vote on this. Okay, I have a motion and a second to uh, adopt the amendments as proposed by Ms. Mel. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes 7 0. Now we're back to the original ordinance that Mr. Hawkins made a motion to adopt, and it was seconded uh, to. Rezone this property located at 1811 1813 Harkrider Street and 1152 Hunter from R2A and O2 to PUD with the list of conditions. Mr. Garrett, take the vote, please, sir. Speak ordinance 02403. Mr. Ledbetter? Yes. Ms. Mel? Aye. Mr. Grimes? Present. Mr. Cummins? Yes. I think Yes. Yes. Sir. Ms. Isby? Yes. Ms. Webb? No. Mr. Hawkins? Yes. Okay, that passes five to one, no to one, present. Correct. Does that sound right? Mr. Correct. Right. Okay, thank you everyone. It's been a long night on this. Next, we have the Public Service Committee. 
First up, we have a resolution to approve Terracon for Environmental Services for the Sanitation Department. Mr. Joe Hopper will be speaking to this. Good evening. Uh, before you is a resolution to approve professional services for our landfill engineering uh, consulting services. Uh, we, uh, in December, we put out an RFQ for these services. We had five submittals and the selection committee evaluated each one of those and selected Terracon uh, consultants. Um, we've, we've done business with Terracon previously and have been very pleased uh, with their performance and, and their, even their pricing. It's been pretty stable for a while, so we, uh, we recommend approving this resolution. Council, any questions for Mr. Hopper? Make a motion for approval of the resolution. And I think I've lost numbers. Is it oh is it ten? Ten, correct. Ten. Second. Thank you. I have a motion and a second to approve this resolution for environmental services for the sanitation department. Any further discussion? Mr. Garrett. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. That's a seven to zero. Next we have an ordinance approving the reclassifications of positions for the sanitation department. Mr. Hopper. Yes, sir. Um so reconsideration is the addition of of one commercial driver position in our residential collections division uh, and three administrative one positions uh, being reclassified to administrative two positions. Um, you know, we all recognize the city's been growing. We haven't added any uh, residential routes since, uh, I mean, this was before I, I started working here in 2015. So uh, our Mondays are very long right now, uh, <laughs> as you can imagine. So we, we we really need to add another driver. Um, and then the, uh, with regards to the administrative positions, uh, we currently have seven positions that are on our approved list. Uh, we try to keep five of those positions uh, staffed. And w with that, we have to add duties to some of our existing staff. So uh, it's my request that we uh, we increase these folks from an admin one to an admin two uh, to accommodate those additional duties. Council, any questions for Mr. Hopper? No, but I would just like to commend your crew. Yes. Last week, yes. in my neighborhood, the sanitation yes. trucks came by to get the recycling. So, yes, sir. Yes. Great, yes. great job by your crew yes, during this yeah. nasty weather. Yeah, I was going to tell you the same thing. I, I was in a meeting yesterday, and they said. Uh, we looked outside, heard noise, and sanitation trucks were out picking up. I think it's 9 p.m. So, Mr. Brown, mm -hmm. probably close oh, to we're at my house yeah. at 7 a.m. Yeah. How did you know? Yeah, Monday uh, became no, uh, pretty long. I'm days. looking out the window. Yes. <laughs> I make a motion for the adoption of the ordinance 02404 along with the emergency clause. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve this ordinance for the reclassification decision within the sanitation department with the emergency clause. Any further discussion? Mr. Garrett. Ms. Isby? Yes. Ms. Mel? Aye. Ms. Webb? Aye. Mr. Cummins? Yes. Mr. Hawkins? Yes. Mr. Grimes? Aye. Mr. Ledbetter? Yes. The emergency clause, Ms. Isby? Yes. Ms. Mel? Aye. Ms. Webb? Aye. Mr. Cummins? Yes. Mr. Hawkins? Yes. Mr. Grimes? Aye. Mr. Ledbetter? Yes. Those both pass seven to zero. Thank you, Joe. And y'all keep up the good work, man. Thank you so Thank much you. for all of that. Last, we have a public safety committee. We have an ordinance approving a vehicle donation for the city attorney's office. And Mr. Finkenbeiner is going to talk to this. He, he, he's not going to talk long. <laughs> this will take more than an hour and a half. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, so it's um, been real important to me since I was uh, able to, to take over a city attorney that we do more community outreach. And that requires four wheels. Um, it's a big city. But I also wanted to increase um, my team's uh, contact with the victims of crime, uh, some of whom can't take off work to come down and meet with us before trials. Um, so if they can't take off work or can't find childcare to come to our office for a meeting, we'll take the meeting to them. But it's very important that my, my team have more contact with the victims of crime and have it another one. But unfortunately, we've got a we've got one Ford Escape. 15 years old, and we it just it, we're going one. This will this will double our ability to, to make contact with victims, <laughs> to and it's free. <laughs> completely free. Completely free. So. Completely free. That's hard to beat. Yeah. So I, I would hope that y'all would 
grant us this donation and, uh, and let us put this, this vehicle to use. I make an, a, a motion that we do adopt ordinance number 024 I'll second that. I have a motion and a second to approve this ordinance for the donation uh, to Mr. Finkenbinder's office. Any further discussion? Mr. Gary. Ms. Webb? Aye. Mr. Ledbetter? Yes. Mr. Hawkins? Yes. Ms. Isby? Yes. Ms. Mel? Aye. Mr. Cummins? Yes. Mr. Grimes? Aye. Passes seven to zero. Now, Mr. Grimes got to hear the state of the city earlier in the week, so he, he told me he said he didn't want to hear it again. So well, I would love to stay in here. It's a great presentation, but I do have somewhere else to I understand, stay. I understand, Mr. Grimes. It is a wonderful presentation. I, I just want you to know my feelings are hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Grimes. I'm going to step up to the podium. Felicia's going to have technology for me because I'll get it wrong. That's okay. People don't want me to look at the camera. It's they'd rather just hear my voice, not have to look at me. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay. As you know, uh, interest rates have increased, and the number of permits for new family uh, houses in Conway has gone down a little bit. Uh, compared to the previous year. However, people are still wanting to build in Conway. Even though that number is falling, our numbers have gone up. Uh, we went up from $266,946 in 2022 to $316,998,000 in 2023. That can be attributed to uh, our construction, uh, specifically in our uh, industrial area. Pharmakia, Custom Compound, West Rock Coffee, West Rock Distribution, Snap-on, Lewis Crossing. The great thing about West Rock Distribution and Snap-on is they are extend, uh, expanding their footprint that they've already got here in Conway. That means that they're successful in Conway and that is big for us. So there's gonna be some new employees coming. Lewis Crossing, I think Dr. Thomas, by the time he is finished out there with his investment will be close to $200 million. The uh, investment that the, uh, that the uh, Lewis family has put in there right now is, is probably running close to 150, 160 million. So that area is really doing well out. Uh, of course, our partnerships with the Chamber of Commerce and Conway Corporation and the CDC makes, makes this work well. 2024 is a solar eclipse. Kurt's not here tonight, is he? Mr. Eclipse. 2024 is a solar eclipse. Depending on you, who you listen to, the estimates are anywhere from 70,000 to 1.2 million coming to Arkansas because we're in pretty well a pretty straight line for about a four minute eclipse. Right now you can't get a hotel in Conway on those dates but the fire department, police department, street department, all departments will be working that day on just that one event and they've uh, John Maddox has worked with the police chief and the fire chief and all the others to come up with a good plan because if you think about it if, if we double the size of Conway you've got to double the size of emergency response for having babies, having heart attacks, having babies, not an emergency response. I'm sorry, Felicia. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, heart attacks, car wrecks, uh, cerebral vascular accidents. So it's important that we are able to move emergency traffic and people, and, and we do have a plan in place. Uh, it's going to bring a lot of folks to Conway, hopefully. Our balance, we balanced our budget. Uh, we came in a little under budget in 2023. Our sales tax was up 4.33%. And we did what we promised. The $0.38 cent sales tax for street expired on March 31st, 2023. At the end of the year, we still have $23 million of this revenue on hand for our future lodge projects within the city and in partnership with RDOT. Transportation, of course, this is all old news to you guys. This is really for, for the folks who are, are listening at home. These are some of the projects we have coming up uh, 2024. Go ahead to the next slide, Felicia. Salem Road. Uh, that will be from college to day ward. Uh, the council recently approved the, uh, the bridge that will be uh, replacing there. We, get a, we had a three, I signed off on a little bit over $3 million grant today with Metro plan to help us pay for that. The great thing about this is not only is it gonna be wider and move more traffic from that area, but it's also gonna put the bike trail underneath it so that we don't have cars and folks kind of crossing the same paths. East German Lane, this was a huge one for us. You know, we've had that school out there for years, and there's not any sidewalks there out there. And this is going to be game changer out there for all those families and kids that live out there. We're going to have eight-foot side paths on either road, on either side of the road. We're going to have a four-foot buffer. 
between the street and uh, the sidewalks. And once we get phase one done, we're going to have a, a turn lane in the middle there right at the highway, uh, Highway 64 East and East German. And we're going to partner with RDOT on that. Hogan Lane and Highway 64, that roundabout, we're hoping to start this year. Uh, we've already moved our pressure uh, sewer main from there, and Conway Corporation has already done some work. That's in partnership with the uh, RDOT, and hopefully we will have that starting here sometime this year. They may bump it back to 2025, but right now all plans are for 2024. This is a big one for everybody, Prince and, and Country Club. This is a roundabout that uh, will start in 2024. That will give us uh, roundabouts all the way down Prince Street uh, until we get to... Uh, Prince and Hogan. 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 Yep. Salem and Meadow Lake. This is a big one that a lot of folks have requested and want to know when we're going to do something with. Uh, the area, the, the cut through has been a tremendous uh, asset to the city. Wooster has water and sewer, and people are moving to Wooster in droves. And these folks are using Salem Road to get into Conway to work. This area backs up quite frequently, and uh, whenever we have a wreck, an area like this, it's usually a T-bone. Mr. Ledbetter can back me up on this. Anytime you have Mr. Elsinger, too, anytime you have a T-bone accident, someone's hurt. So this is coming in 2024 or 2025, but it is on books right behind Prince and uh, Country Club. Downtown Conway, of course, Council, y'all approved this, the purchase of the property there next to the Go Store. That building has been uh, torn down. Uh, next, we'll, we'll start developing our alley. Conway Corporation's partner with us on that for electricity so that we can have some lighting in there and some art and some benches and places to, for people to sit. But we'll also have a pocket park in there. We're going to cap the uh, drainage behind the uh, sandwich shop right there off of, off of uh, Oak Street there. They're going to widen that, cap it to help with our drainage downtown. And then we're going to, our goal is to make that very walkable, very attractive, and then go right across the street and go down, hit the alley behind, uh, right next there by road roundabout and behind the old J.C. Penney's. So those things are coming. Streetscaping, you'll see that going, charging stations, and uh, it's going to be a very nice addition to downtown. Locust Street, everybody asked me about Locust Street in partnership with Conway Corporation. They've been working on reworking their infrastructure in that area. When they get finished, then we'll go back and, uh, and repave that street. Of course, y'all all know about uh, our Metro Connect. Our two new buses are here, so that will give us four, but we are still trying to hire people. Is that correct, Felicia? We're still trying to hire drivers. This has been a tremendous success story in Conway. You can get a ride anywhere in Conway for $2, and on election day, they give free rides. So, but we still, we still need some more drivers to get, to get our other two vans running. Public safety, one of the biggest problems we had was retention of our good police officers. We were losing a lot of officers to other cities. Uh, the council was good enough to vote in major salary adjustments. Uh, that uh, losing our officers to stop, we're almost back to full staffing. I haven't talked to the chief about that. I know he was within five of having uh, full staffing here before Chief Tapley left. And I think they have given a test or are getting ready to give another test, but we're getting very close to having our numbers back up. The community crisis response team, that has been a tremendous success. As you'll remember, that's the uh, program y'all signed off on to have uh, trained mental health professionals uh, working in the Conway Police Department. They have a sergeant who is over that program who has a master's degree uh, in that area. And also we have an officer assigned to that. And then we have two mental health professionals who are not police officers, but who respond with them. They average 16 responses a day in Conway. So this is a program that we our uh, grant runs out next year, but I think it's very important that uh, we follow what Chief Tappan and Chief Harris said and that we, we re-up this because Ms. Isby can speak to this. It's, uh, it's helping a lot of people. It's been very successful. Of course, you know our police department is nationally accredited. Our fire department is a class one ISO rate department, which has an impact on everyone's uh, insurance rates on their businesses and on their homes. Uh, you recently opened uh, fire station number three, the uh, Doist Ballard fire station where Smitty's used to be. I ate a lot of barbecue at Smitty's. Yeah, I know it shows Mr. Hawkins. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and of course, uh, they have a federally accredited bomb disposal unit. The Conway Overnight Shelter opened this year. That's station three. Let's go, there's the Conway Overnight Shelter. And this is for single adults, 18 and over. And 
from what I understand, Felicia, it's, it's staying very busy, correct? It is. And to answer some of the questions about the, our recent cold snap, whenever this facility filled up and the other facilities in the hotels, the city opened up the Owens complex so that people, if, if and I think we did have some overflow on a few nights, so we put uh, beds in the Owens Center and opened it up to people. The uh, park staff was good enough to staff that for us and, and folks were able to get in out of the cold. Park updates. Well, y'all know what all we've done there. Mr. Hawkins, we got Bainbridge Park looking good. We're gonna put some, uh, we're gonna put some tinning out there. Cool. Because there's no trees right there. <laughs> See if we, my wife told me we need those. But if you would go ahead and scroll the next one. Uh, Conway Station Park, as you all know, you all voted and we have turfed all of our baseball fields. Our goal is to be the youth sports capital of Arkansas, and we're heading that, we're heading that way pretty quickly. This has been a big addition for us, not only for our youth that just enjoy playing baseball in the summer, baseball league, but also for our tournament teams that come into Conway. Uh, if, you're, uh, if you're coming into Conway from out of town and there's a chance of bad weather, there's a good chance you won't come. But now, once the lightning clears, we can be on those fields playing quickly. But our first goal was for our kids who, who play here in the summer league, but is also a very good economic driver in that it does bring teams from out of Con outside of Conway. There's another shot of it. Martin Luther King Park opened in 2023. Uh, and you guys all know, the council all knows, uh, that that is not only a tremendous asset for our city, but it also helps with our flooding downtown. Uh, it holds water underneath. If you've ever driven by there after a large rain, it fills up, but then it filters out. The great part about the filter is it clears the silt out of the water to some degree before it goes into Lake Conway, which will help with our silting there. But uh, the art there and just the, uh, the whole park itself is, is used by a lot of folks in uh, something very unique to Conway. Pompey Park, if you, you need to go by there, council, y'all did a great job on voting on that. We finally got our bridges in. This is, uh, it's not a memorial, but it's in honor of our current, past and present uh, military and their families. And it's uh, the, the veterans and their families I've had a chance to visit with are so appreciative of it, but it really looks great when you drive by there in the daytime or at night. The pump park, I know there was some concern about the pump park. Um, our parks department will be going back in and rebuilding the pump park here uh, shortly, shortly. And we're also, if the council approves, we'll also be putting a parking lot out there for the pump park visitors. That'll come before you at some point in the future. Conway at night. So we're, we're, we're going with our art downtown and I wanna tell everybody who's listening, this is a voluntary tax. So uh, if, if you didn't wanna pay for that, you didn't have to, but this is City Hall. The next thing that the council voted on where we're going to have art will be the fire station. I have to tell you the story, Mr. Ledbetter, Chief Ledbetter get a kick out of this. When, when the firemen found out that there was gonna be art on the fire station, my phone starts ringing. I, I pick it up and they said, hey Chief, I said, that's, that's just what they still call me. I said, yeah. They said, there's not going to be any flowers or dandelions or anything on the fire station. Are <laughs> I said, no, it's going to have a firefighter theme, and uh, it will. It's, uh, uh, there's some great firefighter themed uh, buildings around the nation, and, and that's what we're going to go with. Roundabout Art, we're partnering with uh, uh, Conway Regional, University of Central Arkansas, and the Conway Chamber. We built the uh, roundabouts at, at uh, the three, we'll see it'll be Prince and Donaghy, uh, College and Donaghy, and uh, Caldwell and Donaghy. And each of those groups are gonna place a piece of art in each of those. Uh, we ran water and electricity to it, and uh, Jacob Reynolds and his crew and our contractors have done a tremendous job on our, on our roundabouts. It's really moving traffic. This has been a, uh, a really huge surprise. UCA and the city have partnered. UCA is going to, with the council's approval, build a uh, T hangar at our airport, and they will have three planes in there, and they are going to offer aviation classes to students out there who may want to pursue that. Uh, within 24 hours, I th don't hold me to the 24 hours. Let's go. Let's be safe and go the first week. The first week that this was announced, they had uh, over 1,200 folks inquire about this. So, so uh, yeah. It's going to be very popular. Conway Community Center. Boy, this is a big one we're all in waiting for. And for all of y'all listening outside, I want you to know 12 pickleball courts. Linda Hargis, if you're listening, I said 12 pickleball courts. Linda's a big uh, pickleball player, but 
you guys all know that it's going to have indoor and outdoor aquatics, a fitness uh, facility, volleyball courts, as I mentioned, uh, pickleball courts, a community meeting and weight room, uh, event room, party rooms, and there will be room for growth out there. If you haven't been out there lately, you need to go. The trees have been removed out front, those pines, and of course there will be some uh, trees put back in place, but work is, is ongoing there. Hopefully, not hopefully, Felicia will not let me give a specific date other than 2025. That don't mean December 2025. These are just a few renderings of the Conway Community Center. We will have a, a competition pool, eight lanes, with a grandstand and, and a big, uh, I can't remember what they, what they call that area there where the teams meet, Mr. Hawkins? The, the deck? We, we have a large deck there for the teams. That's the uh, Theo Jones Lazy River. <laughs> And this is our soccer facility, which you will see soccer played on this facility this, this spring and summer. It's almost complete, it's looking great. And uh, this is another, uh, this is built for our youth here in Conway that like to play soccer, but it's also built for, for bringing tournament teams into Conway and bringing tournaments to Conway. If you've not been out to see that, go see that. Yeah, it, it's something. Really impressive. Yeah, it's a, uh, I, I went to a few soccer games out the old one, we raised some champion mosquitoes out there at that place. So hopefully this next is going to be a lot better. It will be tremendously better. Connect Conway, as you all know, we got a $24.6 million grant on that. Uh, Robbie will be going with me to Washington, D.C. in February to uh, brief the uh, Arkansas contingency uh, up there on where we're on that and what issues we're having, and hopefully to help us, Ms. Mel, push through those and get started on that. This will start somewhere around, it will start at the Owens Complex. It will go south, come out behind Target and, and that area there. That area there is really beautiful. Mr. Elsinger, I'm sure you remember that when you were a kid, that uh, creek there is really a beautiful area that'll be developed. And our goal is, is not only to connect all of these institutions and different groups and different neighborhoods, but actually give us a chance to move from East Conway all the way out to the airport in the future on a trail. Is that going to be on the east side of that creek or the west side? Of that be on the creek? west side. Mm -hmm. Be on the west side. Yeah, there's mulberries and blackberries out there. And yeah, stuff along it that is street. pretty though. It, it is. Yeah. There's just some more renderings of it. Transparency. Conway was one of the top tier cities with web transparency this year. Uh, Conway, Fayetteville, and Springdale, and that was presented to us by the Arkansas Center for Research and Economics. We have open checkbook. Anyone can go online and see where every penny in Conway is spent. We have moved all of our uh, boards and committees to City Hall where we live stream all of our meetings and we tape those and we play those so that everyone knows everything that's going on in Conway at any time. All you gotta do is go to Channel 22, go to Facebook, go to YouTube, and you can see everything we do. Uh, we just instituted just FOI. That will be so that if it, we get a number of FOI requests. So if you have what a FOI thing in the city, you'll send that in to, we'll have a, be on our website and it'll get you your information, everything you need. Council, y'all approve that and we are greatly appreciative of that. These are our most important assets in Conway, our, our children, our citizens, and our employees. And that's, I appreciate what you guys do for this city because when you get down to it, our citizens and our employees are what make this city, this city great. Mm -hmm. Any of you, if you ever have a chance, and of course our aquatic center will be open, and Council, you've heard me say this, this summer, take time to go out to the splash pad. Yeah. Look at those kids out there playing, listen to them. They don't have a care in the world. They are having a great time. We're gonna have that with our aquatic center, with our baseball fields, with our soccer parks. There are so many good things going on in Conway, and. Uh, our employees are where the rubber meets the road. They're the guys that are out there picking up the trash and fixing the street and getting the bad guys off the street and keeping our parks running and putting out our fires. Is that all of it, Felicia? All right. Council, that's all I had. Last year I did a really quick version of that on for Facebook and YouTube. I think because it was like two minutes, everybody liked it better. So I, I'm sorry for making y'all suffer through this tonight, but I really do appreciate the job that each of you do and I appreciate the people of Conway. Thank you, Council.
one question, Mr. Mayor. We had a rather large attendance at our last meeting. Are there any updates uh, from the police department standpoint on uh, I talked to Mr. Finkenbinder and the police chief today. From my understanding, it is in the prosecuting attorney's office. Is that correct, Mr. Finkenbinder? Correct. Okay. All right. Very good. Uh, FOI uh, video cams from the officers, has that been released? That, that would be a good question for the chief. I do not know. My, my I, did, I, will, I will get you an answer on that. Absolutely. Because that's the second time I've been asked about that tonight, but I will, I will get you an answer on that. Thank you very much. I Absolutely. Miss Isby, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. We are adjourned. Thank you, Council.